हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय राध हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी कैन यू अलाउ मी टू शेयर स्क्रीन अखिलेश कैन यू मेक माता जी कोवर्स प्लीज no problem we'll get started mata ji your co-host now okay all right i think we can everybody can see my screen now yes mata ji oh so we'll start with our uh, pranam mantras and then we will go on to the verse that we are going to uh, um, talk about today small oh, ma- sorry prabhu small pop up is there like gone oh, live caption let me see Yeah. Is it okay now? Yes, Mata Ji. Yeah. Let's try this again. All right. I think now it's showing. Om Agnya Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakya. चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुर नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोवेष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वदाक वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकम श्री गुरून श्री रूपा सागर जातम सह गना रघुनाथन सवधूत पिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सह गना ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु भये वच पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः श्री चैतन्य मनो श्री च श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधारा शिवा सादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 
कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे so today we will uh, discuss chapter 12 verse 10 chapter 12 is bhakti yoga and this is a very um, relevant verse for us today that we are going to discuss so let's invoke all auspiciousness by chanting om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya अभ्यास मत्म परमो भव मदर्थमी कर्माणी कुरवन सिद्धिमवाप्स्यसि कृष्ण सेज इफ यू कैन नॉट प्रैक्टिस द रेगुलेशन ऑफ भक्ति योगा देन जस्ट ट्राई टू वर्क फॉर मी बिकॉज बाय वर्किंग फॉर मी यू विल कम टू दैट परफेक्ट स्टेज so i would love for uh, some of our devotees uh, you know maybe two uh, two or three devotees who would like to recite this verse along with the translation and after that we will go into the purport video put it abhyase pya samarto si mat karma paramo bhava madartham api karmani kurvan siddhim avapsyasi translation translation if you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga then just try to work for me because working for me you will come to the perfect stage thank you samanvita Do we have another volunteer? Don't be shy. This is practice for us. Okay, let's continue. Abhyase pya samartho si mat karma paramo bhava. मदर्थम अपी कर्माणी कुरवन सिद्धिम अवाप्स्यसी अभ्यास इन प्रैक्टिस अभ्यास इज प्रैक्टिस यू नो स्टडी प्रैक्टिस अपी इवन इफ असमर्थ अनेबल असी यू आर मत कर्म माय वर्क माय वर्क एंड दिस हियर माय वर्क इज कृष्णाज वर्क परम डेडिकेटेड टू bhava become madartham for my sake api even karmani work purvan performing siddhim perfection avapsyasi you will achieve so krishna says if you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga then just try to work for me because by working for me you will come to the perfect stage let's <clears throat> let's read, read first and I, like i've always said uh, the purports are extremely important because shrila prabhupada has put the essence and the juice of the, these verses in the purport okay so my uh, learning from the last 20 years is never skip the purport always read and study the purport So Shila Prabhupada says, one who is not able to even who is not able even to practice the regulative principles of bhakti yoga under the guidance of a spiritual master, 
can still be drawn to this perfectional stage by working for the Supreme Lord. We hear in many, many lectures that, you know, the take seeking the guidance of a spiritual master is so important for progress. So, but here Krishna is saying, even if we are not able to practice the regulative principles under the guidance of a spiritual master, we can still be drawn to the perfectional stage by working for the Supreme Lord. How to do this has been explained in chapter 11, verse 55. It says, Mat karama krin mat paramo mat bhakta sanga varjita nirvaira sarva bhuteshu ya samam eti pandava. Here Krishna is telling Arjuna, My dear Arjuna, he who engages in my pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of fruitive activities and mental speculation. He who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of his life and who is friendly to every, be every living being, he certainly comes to me. So how do we, without, Krishna is telling us here, this is Bhakti Yoga chapter, right? It is devotional service. And I'll cover a little more summary of the chapter later. But here he's saying, even if you're not able to practice the regulative principles, you can still come to the perfectional stage. And that is by engaging in pure devotional service. So the purity of our heart is what Krishna is looking for. The purity of the heart comes when you are saying, I am not going to think of what is going to be the result of this activity. Or, you know, I speculate how this will benefit me or ben benefit somebody else or not benefit anybody. But just working for Krishna, making Krishna the supreme goal, offering everything to Krishna and being friendly to every being. You know, as they say, don't be jealous. Don't uh, uh, be mean to people, right? So be friendly. Look at everybody as Krishna within them. Then we have the opportunity to go to Krishna. How can we go to Krishna without perfecting ourselves? Okay. There is a qualification that we all have to rise to in order to be able to go back to Krishna. and. Throughout Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has given various paths. And even in chapter 12, he has addressed various paths, how we can get to him. But he's also said, which is the best path and who is the dearest to him? As a parent, for most of us who are parents, we know we love all our children. When I was little, I would tell my mother, oh, you don't, you love my sisters more than me. <clears throat> And she would show me the five fingers of her hand. And he, she said, okay, tell me which finger can I cut off your hand or hurt your hand on which you will not feel pain? And I would say, no, I feel pain in every finger if it gets hurt. And she would tell me that is, that is what being a parent is. Krishna is a parent. He's our eternal father. So he loves all his children. But there are some who aim to please him. And we know as parents also, while we love all our children, while we provide for all our children and treat them equally, there may be, there may be one child out of two or one out of three who does something for you, which goes above and beyond. And that creates that special spot in your heart. Not to say that you will treat that child differently, but you know, and that child becomes even more dear to you. That is how Krishna is saying, we are all his children and how we can become dear to him. This is like the formula. Bhagavad Gita is the formula book as to how we transition and transcend. Okay, there is going to be transition before we transcend. So first we have to transition to that perfect state. Then we can transcend to go back to Krishna.
Srila Prabhupada continues. So what does this verse 1155 say? This verse 1155 tells us, one should be sympathetic towards the propagation of Krishna consciousness. We all have to have that realization, appreciation, and understanding that propagating Krishna consciousness is not easy, but we have to be empathetic and we have to be supportive of that propagation. Propagation. There are many devotees who are engaged in the propagation of Krishna consciousness and require help. That is true. We all need help and support. So even if one cannot directly practice the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga, you can try to help such work. Every endeavor requires land, capital, organization, and labor. Just as in business, one requires a place to stay, some capital to use, some labor, and some organization to expand, it is the same when we are in the service of Krishna. The only difference is that in materialism, one works for sense gratification. The same work, however, can be performed for satisfaction of Krishna, and that is spiritual activity. So this is very relevant to us, and I'm glad that this is being, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, shared live on Facebook. And I request all of you to share it further on your page because this is so. This verse is so relevant to where we are today. It's been months and months that you can see, but years, as I know, that we've not been participating in it. But it's been years of effort. You know, Satisar Prabhu has been trying, has been propagating Krishna consciousness well before I knew him. Okay. And for 10, 10 plus years in just in Austin. So it, today we are at that stage in our propagation of Krishna consciousness where we need more help. We've always needed support and help. Like every material organization, even a spiritual organization needs land, capital, labor, everything. And just so you know, this is not something that uh, I have uh, written. This is directly from the purport that Srila Prabhupada has written. So this is just the right verse for us today to understand that if we cannot practice the uh, regulative principles, Krishna is giving us another opportunity. He says, it's okay if you cannot practice. There are students who are focused on uh, their school and college. and They're not able to practice. There are adults who have the intention but are not able to practice. This is that opportunity for everybody who is either able to practice or even not able to practice to help in such work. Just helping in the propagation of Krishna consciousness can nullify and eradicate our sins from lifetimes and bring us to that stage of perfection. Okay. So Srila Prabhupada continues. He says, if one has sufficient money, one can help in building an office or a temple for propagating Krishna consciousness, or one can help with publications. We know our congregation is actually doing everything to support this. You know, whether it is through funds, whether it is through cooking the meals for Krishna and the prasadam, whether it is through creating our monthly publications, we are all involved in this. But what we can do is we can involve more people in this by propagating Krishna consciousness. Because remember, the more we are, the bigger we can support this uh, propagation of Krishna consciousness. So even as a small congregation, we are doing so much. Imagine if we were 10 times this congregation, we could have done so much more for Krishna. So propagating Krishna consciousness and supporting Krishna consciousness is the key. There are various fields of activity. For example, somebody is good at art, somebody is good at you know, video production. And one should be interested in such activities. Think, students, adults, think, what is the skills that I have and 
how can I use my skill set in the service of Krishna? If you are a good speaker, go propagate the message of uh, Bhagavad Gita. If you are good at art, create artwork for the temple. If you are good at video production, social media, there are so many fields. I think where I want us to really introspect is, let's introspect. I can do finance or I can do marketing or I can do A, B, and C. God has gifted us, Krishna has gifted all of us with some or the other skills, natural skills that we are really good at. Let us now use these skills to serve the Lord. Because that, once we start using our skills to serve the Lord, that's when we start gradually sharpening our skills, sharpening the saw, and ultimately we will reach that stage of perfection, whether in this lifetime or next, to be able to not just transition, but transcend. Srila Prabhupada continues, if one cannot sacrifice the results of one's activities, one can still sacrifice some percentage. So I think in last week's fundraising effort, I had talked a little bit about ongoing, you know, set up, ongoing uh, uh, support to the temple. So here, you know, there are two kinds of people, at least based on my life experience. Some who will say, oh, Krishna, please give me that. They may not even say Krishna. They may say whoever they worship, please give me something and I will contribute uh, 10% or 50% of my earnings for uh, the temple or charitable contributions. So uh, back you know, when I was growing up, there was this famous um, music producer, uh, Gulshan Kumar, who, used, who had, a, who had a, like a quasi contract with God that everything I'm going to earn, I'm going to, donate 50% of it, okay? That is one kind of people, but at least they are, yes, there is a condition there. It is not unconditional. So people are putting that condition only if I get, I will give you. But I think that becomes still self-serving. So, and this is just my views. So let's be a little selfless when it comes to Krishna. Krishna has been completely selfless in giving us this beautiful human birth, okay? Showering us with blessings and giving us countless blessings. You know, I don't know anybody who can make a list of their blessings and say, I have these finite 10 blessings or 20 blessings. We are so countless every single day we are protected. Every single day we are blessed. So when Krishna is giving us countless blessings, infinite blessings, why do we want to be so finite? Of course, you know, there is a practicality element which we know. And that is why Srila Prabhupada says, if we cannot sacrifice the results of our activities, which means give up everything, that is okay. We can still sacrifice some percentage to propagate Krishna consciousness. Now, I, I know we don't mandate in ISKCON, but in churches, and I know because I have a lot of friends who go to church, they mandate that you are going to give 10% of your uh, monthly uh, income. And, you know, it is, it is something they do proudly and they... Uh, demand of their people and people are also very giving and they give it. I mean, when I, when I drive by in, whether it is in Austin or whether it was in LA, I mean, look at the size of these churches, look at the parking lots of these churches. When you look at these churches, you're like, wow, the churches as an institution have, and each of these are independent, just like our temples, the, you know, most of the churches fund themselves independently some have a bigger you know funding from some other places but most of them have to sustain themselves and you drive by these churches and accidentally not that i'm specially going to see churches but you realize that you know there is a power there is a little more sacrifice even if there are their morals may be different from ours 
but the one thing i have to uh, commend them on is the contributions that they now we don't mandate in our hari krishna temples but we encourage okay so each individual because krishna has told us that krishna does not demand from us krishna will not force us to do an activity he will give us the free will so we are actually doing things just like how krishna asked us to do we are giving each other the free will and the choice to sacrifice some percentage of your uh, of your results to propagate krishna consciousness and as a parent again i go back to the example of parent because that is so close to all of us you will always you cannot after your children are adult you cannot force them to do something even sometimes even before they are adult you cannot force them to do things but you can only counsel them coach them okay and after that they have to decide what choice they make okay i think as parents and even as children who are listening to this you will all agree that no matter what coaching and counseling and guidance you get from your parents ultimately you make the choice as to what how you are going to uh, what activity you are going to do likewise krishna being our parent also does that he has given us bhagavad gita for those of us in this class he has blessed us and showered us with the opportunity to propagate krishna consciousness okay and now it is up to us how we sacrifice a percentage to propagate the krishna consciousness prabhupada is also saying this voluntary service so again this is a choice we make and many years ago i'm going to uh, derail a little bit here there was a uh, there was an episode where uh, anika was probably you know 8 years old and i asked her what happened you know there was something that happened in school and i asked her what happened and she was probably in third or fourth grade so 8 or 9 years old and she told me well i don't think this person makes good choices and she was referring to somebody else and i thought that was so profound and deep thinking for an 8 year old to recognize what good choices are so again this is a choice so it is up to us to make the right choice shri prabhupad says this voluntary service because this is not being forced on anybody to the cause of krishna consciousness will help one rise to a higher state of love for god whereupon one becomes perfect so this was the purport of uh, this verse and it is such a i think the whole um, bhakti yoga chapter is so powerful and uh, i'm going to stop sharing screen because i have some thoughts that i want to share with all of you so this bhakti yoga chapter is so powerful during kartik month we do bhakti yoga a chapter every day okay and after i started doing bhakti yoga chapter along with chapter 15 every day it just became so important for me to remind ourselves of the importance of bhakti yoga we spend a lot of time just a lot of time people spend on ashtanga yoga the studios are full of ashtanga yoga you look at anybody i have all my friends who are talking about fitness and health and uh, you know appearance and all of that granted taking care of this body is our duty because if the body is not functioning properly then how will we engage this body in the service of krishna i remember hearing one lecture from shila prabhupad once and one word resonated one statement resonated with me was endeavor is good always make that endeavor but over endeavor doesn't necessarily achieve you a much bigger result so it is our duty to do to take action whether it is maintaining this body 
whether it is maintaining our finances, whether it is maintaining a livelihood, it is absolutely our duty. Krishna said when he was on this planet Earth that even I, as in Krishna, am doing work because I want to set the example that human life was not made to be in inaction. We all have to be in the mode of action. However, if we channelize those actions for the service of the Lord, then we free ourselves from the results, from the um, results of those actions. Okay, so otherwise you do charity, you accumulate pious, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, your bank balance credit goes up. Think of it this way. You do some bad karma, your bank balance goes down. So if you look at life, that is what it is. But when we do this purely for the service of Krishna and for pleasing Krishna, we are able to free ourselves from the reaction of all of this. So let me uh, go a little deeper into chapter 12. Okay, chapter 12 is where Arjun starts asking Krishna as to whether it is better to have devotional love for Krishna in the form or for the less tangible, you know, uh, impersonal form in the un unmanifest God. Okay, Arjun says, Evam satata yuktaye bhaktasvam paryupasate ye chapaksharam avyaktam tesham ke yoga vittama. He says, what is considered to be more perfect? Those who are always engaged in your devotional service or those who worship the impersonal Brahman. Now, for those who have not read this chapter, very important, Krishna says, Maya Veshya Manu Yema Nitya Yukta Upasate Shraddhaya Parayo Petas Teme Yukta Tamamata the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, those who fix their minds on my personal form and are always engaged in worshipping me with great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be most perfect. So, as I said, this chapter begins, Bhakti Yoga chapter begins with Arjun asking Krishna about the two types of worship. And should, he, should we worship the form of Krishna or should you worship the formless Brahman? And Krishna declares that, yes, devotees, later in this chapter, Krishna says, devotees can attain him by both paths. However, Krishna considers those who worship his personal form as the perfect. They are going to achieve perfection. So in this small chapter of 20 verses, Krishna emphasizes that the path of devotion is the highest among all spiritual practices. Again, like me, you also may have friends who say, oh no, we believe in karma yoga. That is fine. Krishna does not uh, diminish that karma yoga is also a path okay, towards him. But he says that the highest path to devotion and to reach Krishna is bhakti yoga. So later in this chapter, Krishna explains to Arjun that it is very difficult to meditate upon the unmanifest aspect. I mean, I ask a lot of people who say I meditate every day and I ask them, hey, what do you meditate on? Tell me. Somebody will say I meditate on my inner self. But then I ask them more tangible. So what do you mean by inner self? I have reached out to so many people, even, you know, uh, tried to decode information from some of the modern day celebrities who talk about meditation. And I've not been able to come to an answer as to when people say I meditate on my inner self, what exactly they do when they are in that mode of meditation. Okay. So, Krishna, but Krishna is also saying in Bhagavad Gita that it is rather difficult to meditate on an unmanifest aspect of God. These are not even people who manifest on any aspect of God. I'm sorry, who meditate on any aspect of God. They are people who say, I meditate. And I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, 
but chastising anybody or criticizing anybody, I feel when I meditate, if I meditate on the japa, on the names of the Lord, I can, I can feel some connection. But if I meditate on myself, my mind just keeps wandering all the time. And I think of past, I think of future, I think of today. And I've tried doing that, but I've not had much success. And when I read Bhagavad Gita, I understand that Krishna is saying, meditate upon Krishna. And in this age of Kali, we have been given the mantra meditation, the maha mantra of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. When we keep doing this mantra, it will develop that love of God. Krishna will reveal himself to us. And that is when we will transition gradually to that mode of perfection after which we can transcend to Krishna. Later in this chapter, Krishna says, hence the path of worshipping the formless is full of tribulation for the embodied soul. He says it is very difficult for the embodied soul to meditate on the impersonal feature. In verse 5, he says, That means our, you know, the body. He says, for those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested impersonal feature, advancement is very troublesome. Now, come on, this is something Krishna is saying. How can we then not follow what he's saying? Because Krishna is telling us it is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is very difficult for those who are embodied. So any of us who are in this body form, making progress uh, in meditating upon the impersonal feature is very difficult. So therefore, Krishna asks that Arjuna, give up all your doubts and surrender your intellect and fix your mind in loving devotion to me. That is very important. Krishna says that such love of God doesn't come naturally to struggling souls. Okay, I'm, on, I'm only going to put myself in that struggling souls category because I don't want to be disrespectful of anybody here. but. I know, we, you know, that it is extremely difficult to develop that love of God. It doesn't come, we, we were not born. We were born and we started loving our family, our friends, our material possessions. But we had to train ourselves to love God. I mean, this, I know it is such a pity, but that is what our conditioned state is. Devotion is not a mysterious gift that one can get. It requires consistent effort to cultivate. So we have to be intentional about Krishna consciousness. We have to be deliberate and consistent and persistent effort will cultivate that love of God. Krishna tells Arjun that if he's unable to absorb his mind in Krishna completely, in you know, the Lord completely, then we should all strive uh, to do his work with devotion. Okay, so that, now, it's coming, now it's coming to that verse uh, 10 that we were talking. If you're not able to do this, then work for me. And with constant practice of working for Krishna, we will reach perfection. And then he says, Arjuna, if you cannot even do this, then work for the pleasure of Krishna. So one is following the regulative principles okay, of Bhakti Yoga, you can't do that. Just work for the pleasure of Sri Krishna. That is so easy. Whatever you eat, offer to Krishna. Bow down, pay your obeisances to Krishna. Sing Kirtan, read Bhagavad Gita. These are all such easy things to do. And we definitely can do all of this. Go to the temple, you know, cook for the devotees. Everything is something which is within our reach. So this verse is telling us that it is totally within our reach if we decide to work for the pleasure of Krishna. 
he says, then he says after that, he says, even if this is difficult for you, then simply renounce the fruit of your work and be situated in yourself. So people who cannot even assign their work to Krishna, like the example I was giving earlier, he says, okay, then at least give up the results of your fruit. Uh, give up the, uh, sorry, results of the action. Further in this chapter, Krishna explains that cultivation of knowledge is higher than mechanical practice. I know, and you know, many of us, when we started chanting, and some of, and sometimes even today, we chant mechanically, right? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ram, and mind wanders, right? That is why we need to bring our mind back. And that verse 6.6 that we read today was also telling control your mind. We need to keep bringing our mind back. How many of times the mind gets distracted? Bring the mind back. Be deliberate. Be intentional about bringing the mind back. And if we read the scriptures, we cultivate knowledge. What is the importance? When I started chanting, I didn't know the importance of chanting. I was just doing it to please my parents. Okay, Because my parents said chant one round, I was chant one round. That was purely mechanical. Now I think it is a hybrid between mechanical and knowledge because I have read so much that I know the importance of it. So I have to keep bringing my mind back, keep bringing my mind back. And I want you all to know that despite doing this for 20 years, I'm still very vulnerable because we have not attained perfection yet. So it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to recognize, but that self-awareness is important because without that self-awareness and cultivation of knowledge, we will not even realize that we need to bring our mind back to think. Okay. So this chapter deliberates between bhakti yoga, love of God, and worshiping the unmanifest. Okay. Krishna advocates primarily for devotional love. He's saying that. It is so easy, okay, for us to be focused on the path of bhakti yoga, okay? Bhakti yoga is also more directly tied to karma yoga. So if we develop bhakti, then we are going to be easily able to channelize our actions in the service of the Lord. So karma will automatically come if you are focused on bhakti yoga. He teaches Arjuna that by devotional service and devotional love, we can really overcome a lot of the hindrances that we will face in our way otherwise. The path of understanding this is through study and meditation, meditation on Krishna. And ultimately, yes, Krishna has said in Bhagavad Gita that all routes lead to the same end. But which route is the fastest and the best? More than fastest, I think it is fastest, maybe the wrong word. Which route is considered the highest route, highest path? And bhakti yoga is considered the highest path to be able to reconnect ourselves with the Supreme. And Krishna also says it is really not very difficult. It is simple to focus on worship and devotion. Okay. And please the Lord through your actions. So in some ways, it is also easier than some of the other parts. So, but meditating on the unmanifest and obscure and formless thing, it is very difficult for us to stay focused in our meditation when that happens. Worshipping Krishna's manifestation allows a person to find a more direct and relatable challenge. Uh, a channel for devotion. So if you if you know a form, I mean, th there was a time when we did not have video Zoom calls, okay? When I was working many years ago uh, at Accenture, we always had only uh, audio calls. So we really never saw somebody, okay? You heard the voice and there was a box on the screen which told you who's speaking at what time. And it was very difficult to be able to connect with those people because you really could not uh, put a form to them. Likewise, 
it is so much easier to connect with Krishna. I mean, you close your eyes and whatever form is most uh, dear to you will appear when you say Krishna. For me, when I close my eyes and think of Krishna, I think of Rukmini Dwarkadish at the Los Angeles temple because that's where I spent most of my uh, spiritual life in Los Angeles. And there will be a day, and I'm 100% sure as we, you know, as I uh, serve our deities at the Austin temple, it is going to create that image in front of my eyes. So it's a lot easier to connect with a form than to connect with something abstract. Our children who study physics, they know it is really, why do people say physics is a very hard subject? Because there is a lot that is abstract and you have to be able to conceptualize and understand that abstract knowledge. Biology, on the other hand, children find it a lot easier because they can connect it to, okay, the eye and the function of the eye and, you know, the gastric system and this and that. It's because even in the material world, we are able to connect with something, a subject or a field of study also, that is more relatable than something which is talking of quantum physics, which you know many of us don't understand because it is so, it, it, there is so much abstract knowledge there. And I'm sure as you progress in that field, you will come out of that abstract knowledge and be more practical. But at the level that we are, we don't understand abstract. We understand something which is, which has a form, which has a, a you know, which has for in, in, in terms of meditation, I want to see that. I want to see that beautiful Krishna. And for me, of course, with my material eyes, for all of us, we can only see the form that we have imprint in our soul. Okay. But one day, imagine if we can see the real form of Krishna, every Janmashtami at midnight, when we used to have the Aarti at LA Temple, I would have tears in my eyes because they would decorate Rukmini Dwarkadi so beautiful, so beautiful. And I would say, if Krishna can be so beautiful just to these material eyes, what, what to talk of his real beauty? I mean, when our Goswamis, you know, we've read our Goswamis would be crying in separation of Krishna. We are far from that. But even if we develop a small portion of that love in this lifetime, Krishna has promised he will not let this go to a waste. He will pick us up from where we left. Everything else your family, your friends, your wealth. When we leave this body, we are all left behind. We don't carry that, you know? So that is why it is important for us to support the propagation of Krishna consciousness in this lifetime so that we can make a very strong imprint on our soul. Because this imprint on the soul will either deliver us or give us that next life to complete our journey. In the end of this chapter, Krishna says, Yetu dharma amritam idam yathoktam paryupasate shraddhadana matparama bhaktaste teva me priya. Krishna says, those who follow this imperishable, remember, this is an imperishable part of devotional service and who completely engage themselves with faith, making me the supreme goal are very, very dear to me. So one is, remember, this is an imperishable part, devotional service, nothing will go to a waste. This is the best investment of human life. We all, including me, we work on investing our finances, but let me tell you, no Bitcoin and no other uh, stock can give you the appreciation that investment in devotional service will give you. And that is why Srila Prabhupada said, sacrifice, work for Krishna. 
sacrifice your results or if you cannot sacrifice your results, at least a percentage of your result to Krishna. It will develop love in our heart. It will develop faith. And that is how we will become very dear to Krishna. We all want to become very dear to Krishna. But we have to remember that like everything else, there is a path, there is a process. And we are so fortunate that Krishna has revealed this to us. We are so fortunate that we came in contact with a devotee in our life who has brought us to this point. Now it is our duty to keep, you know, uh, my, uh, to keep pulling each other forward on this path of Krishna consciousness. But devotee never wants to go back to Krishna alone. But devotee, you know, Prahlad Maharaj, when he was asked, he said, no, I want this for everyone. But devotee has so much empathy, so much humility and love for everybody that they don't want things for themselves. They want things for everybody. Let us all become that devotee. And let us all serve Hare Krishna Temple of Austin with whatever sacrifice we can do and contribute on an ongoing basis and pull this chariot further. Think of this as a chariot where Krishna is sitting and we are pulling this chariot. And by pulling this chariot, we keep bringing ourselves closer to Krishna. Krishna doesn't need anything from us. He is the owner of the whole universe. He does not need Lakshmi. Lakshmi is in his service. It is we who need to take ourselves forward, who need to use this opportunity and move in that right direction so that some lifetime we free ourselves from this material world of birth, death, disease, and old age. And we transcend to the planet of Krishna, to Golok Vrindavan. And that is when Krishna has said, I promise you, you will never come back once you return. So, Hare Krishna, everybody. Thank you for listening. And please take this to heart. Take this message to heart. And do everything you can for the service of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Mataji, will you take a question, a couple of questions? Sure, Prabhu. I will do my best. Devotees, if if you have any questions pertaining to this class or other than this class, you can free to ask. Hare Krishna. You can unmute and ask if anyone have any questions. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, I don't have any questions, but uh, uh, wonderful class by Mataji. I uh, heard only partial as usual. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Okay. So thank you, Mataji. It's a brilliant class as usual. It is very easy to understand and practical to implement. And um, uh, you also nicely mentioned how to how we can be dear to Krishna and how Vaishnava's qualities are like Paradukha Dukhi. So we um, Vaishnavas always uh, like give and take their association to progress uh, together. Um, thank you, Mataji. That's a wonderful class. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So, now the next part of the program is Gaura Arti. Um, uh, everyone can watch Arti online uh, uh, by pinning the temple window. If you over um, mouse on the temple window, then three dots you can put and pin uh, pin the video.
Hare Krishna. Yeah, we'll start the Aarti pretty soon. So. Yeah. And uh, today Aarti is uh, singing by uh, Jishnu and Driti. Hare Krishna, Radha Damodar Prabhu. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now we will uh, have Maharaji. Oh, my God. 
Thank you for a uh, nice uh, Arti for Pushpanjali Mataji and uh, Jishnu and uh, Driti for the uh, singing uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra and thank you for Narsim Arti. Now Radha Damodar Prabhu will do um, announcements. 